Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and welcome to Season 20 of Pokemon Go Battle League. This is the largest season update ever with hundreds of changes and the switch timer going from 60 seconds to 50 seconds. Today, I'm going to be showcasing the massive buff to the fast move Karate Chop and its relevance to Pangoro. Pangoro is now lightning fast, Night Slash every 8 turns, close combat every 10. This is identical pacing to Gallade, which is very fast, but Karate Chop does more fast move damage than Psycho Cut. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and take a look at the lightning fast Pangoro in Season 20 of Pokemon Go Battle League. Hopping into the first match, leading Clodsire into Talonflame. Most Clodsire runs Stone Edge, so you're probably going to be able to get a shield with Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb is an intentional choice on Clodsire, considering my final Pokemon is completely defenseless against any fairy type. I wanted to make sure that I could deal significant damage to fairy types, and honestly, the slightly superior pacing of Sludge Bomb ended up being clutch in a lot of matches. In this moment, I have a choice. I can shield and win the ones, or I can give up switch and instead get farm on for alligator. This season, I very much believe if you're running for alligator, whoever manages their energy better will basically automatically win the game. Here, my opponent is gonna send out Superior and they're gonna get smacked with an Ice Beam unless they shield. The Ice Beam will connect, dealing massive damage, and now I'm more than happy to let for Alligator go and go for energy on Pangoro. In comes Pangoro as we see lightning fast energy generation already three quarters of the way to a Night Slash. What do they have in the back? They have a Shadow Venusaur in the back. So here's the thing, a Poison type against the Fighter should favor the Poison type, but look at the speed on Pangoro. Already at another Night Slash. I'm gonna shield because I'm gonna need to wait turns and make sure they don't catch. So I throw one, wait the turn, they don't get the catch, and then I'm gonna throw two more and again, wait the turn. Pangoro gets the boost, opponent tries for the catch, they are unsuccessful, and the pacing on Pangoro is absolutely wild. Boosted close combat, annihilates the Venusaur, and that's a good game. Moving into the next match, we get an unbelievably good lead, leading Clodsire into Shadow Galvantula. Opponent safe switches into Superior, and if you're not running Sludge Bomb, Superior actually can win this matchup. However, if you're running Sludge Bomb, then this matchup is actually very dominant for the Clodsire. This isn't to say that Sludge Bomb is incredible and Stone Edge is terrible, it's just my own personal preference, and with this team, I really liked Sludge Bomb being able to hit back against the Fairies. Here, my opponent ends up double shielding their Superior, but guess what? I have a very high rank Clodsire, which means I can actually survive that damage, make one final Sludge Bomb, and win the 0-2 shield versus Superior thanks to Sludge Bomb. In the back, they have Azumarill, and this game is over. The opponent just doesn't know it yet. Two Shield Pangoro cannot lose in this situation. I bring in for Alligator. For Alligator, we'll go for the Hydro. That does a little bit of chip damage. I can let this go as I do survive, and I'm going to be immediately bringing in the Panda. In comes Pangoro. Pangoro going to be answered with the Shadow Galvantula. Honestly, I'm not sure who wins charge attack priority here. Both Pokemon have insanely high attack stats. Look at the Night Slash damage and another boost. Let's go, Pangoro. They're going to lower my attack from plus two to plus one. But even at plus one, I'm karate chopping down a bug type and leaving with back-to-back Plus one boosted close combats. That close combat smacks the Azumarill, and there's more where that came from. Pangoro firing off close combat number two. Down goes Azumarill, and that's another win. Overall, I did go 14-1 and one with this team. To be fair, these are the first few sets of the season. So in the first few sets, a lot of the times in rank one, you're going to encounter opponents who just don't have built Pokemon. So that's why I intentionally didn't put that in the title because I don't really want it to be a selling point on this particular team. Here, the opponent actually leads their own Pangoro. This is four. It's only the Night Slash, and I can barely hang on with Feraligator and force a shield. Pegoro can do well versus a lot of things. Obviously, fighting in dark is very nice coverage, but its two biggest problems in the meta are any fairy type and Clodsire. Clodsire just does so well against the panda because the panda isn't able to go for close combat. It's stuck going for Night Slash, and Clodsire is one of the few Pokemon bulky enough to absorb multiple neutral Night Slashes. In the back, they have Venusaur, and this game is very much over. As look at the energy generation. I can farm to 100 with Pangoro. If they shield, I'm shielding back and just farming to 100 again. At this point, the opponent knows it's over. I can build up to the back-to-back -back close combats. This thing is so fast. 
Close Combat knocks out the opposing Pangoro, and we're able to take the game. Claude Sire vs. Gastrodon, negative lead. I'm going to be save switching into Feraligator. If your opponent stays in, you can actually throw instantly, and it's going to be on perfect charge attack timing, as long as you switched right at the start of the game. The interesting thing about this matchup is that Feraligator is guaranteed to win the twos if it lands a Hydro. Here, my opponent has seven Mud Slaps, which is double Body Slam. So, since I win charge attack priority, I'm just going to click Hydro Cannon here. I did throw an alignment, but it's a pretty obvious time for them to click their move. So now, I force the shield, I'm fine giving up my second shield, and I'm just going to farm down. Opponent does not want to let that happen, they aggressively pivot into Talonflame, and this is a little uncomfortable. I'm low enough where they can actually farm me down. I throw a Shadow Claw, I defer the Incinerate onto the Claude Sire, I make the Sludge Bomb as they make 100 energy. This is good, I'll guaranteed land a Sludge Bomb, but they're actually running Brave Bird, and this means that I can actually knock out. I undercharge here, I'm hoping to leave them on low HP so I can get farm with Pangoro, but my opponent actually doesn't let me here. I'm gonna farm up, wait the turn, my opponent tries to catch, they're unsuccessful, and this game will be a win. Waiting turns, paying dividends in the early season. As I mentioned, like the first set, I did encounter a lot of opponents who just didn't have built mons, but in sets two and three, I was facing some pretty good opponents, so waiting turns was definitely required. Pegoro, as I mentioned, not going to do well against Claude Sire, but after I've done some chip damage, it's going to do just fine. There's another boost. Granted, this boost doesn't matter. The Night Slash would have KO'd anyway. But the Panda Bear was boosting early and often, and that definitely made for some very fun sets. We move to the next match. Claude Sire against Machamp. Machamp is fully walled here. This is a dominant matchup for the Claude Sire. This is one of the reasons why I'm a little less hype about Machamp than others, just because Machamp is completely walled. Cross Chop and Stone Edge, unfortunately, not gonna do a whole lot of anything against the Claude Sire. They're gonna save switch to their own Claude Sire, and I'm gonna quickly respond with a Shadow for Alligator. They can live a Hydro Cannon. Claude Sire actually does win the ones versus Shadow for Alligator straight Earthquake, just due to the fact that Claude is monstrously bulky. I will commit the shield. It is going to be the Stone Edge bait. At this point, I wasn't really counting, so maybe I could have overfarmed more, but I decided to overfarm just a little bit, just to guarantee that they're not going to be able to make a move. Back in comes the Machamp, and I'm going to let this go. If it's a Cross Chop, I can survive it. It is a Cross Chop, and because they're running Karate Chop, not Counter, Karate Chop is energy focused, which means they can't get the farm down. They actually give up the final shield. They end up making a nice catch, catching a Sludge Bomb onto Feraligator, but this game is over. At this point, I can just farm up to a Night Slash plus a Close Combat, and I'm good here. However, for science, I'm gonna let this go to see how much damage this does. Hydro Cannon actually does more than I expected, and I'm actually unable to get the Night Slash Close Combat double up. The good news is, I still win the game anyway, because I still have a full health Claude Sire, and Machamp cannot damage Claude Sire, so the game is still won, but that's very good information. I have a very high rank Pangoro. I believe it was GoFest 2022 they were spawning in the wild, so that's how I do have a PvP IV1 for the Great League. And now the opponent just ends up, it looks like, closing the app, but we still get the Poison Sting down and the win. The Claude Sire Mirror. Here I'm typically going to play out to lose the zeros. Since I have a very high rank Claude Sire, more often than not, I'm going to be losing the zeros because, of course, you're never going to poison this thing down on opposing Claude Sire. This matchup is decided by who gets to land an earthquake that will be able to deliver the knockout blow. And at 115.12, I'm probably not going to be going first. So I'm just going to let this go, and I'm going to go for big farm on a Shadow for Alligator. Shadow for Alligator up energy is just nearly uncounterable in this meta. My opponent is going to save some energy and switch in their own for Alligator. And pay attention to this play very carefully. I go for the Hydro, I land it, they try and CMP time me, but I don't let them. Instead, I'm going to one shield farm down. I know Claude doesn't have a move. I leave with two Hydro and my opponent is now in an absolute nightmare scenario. They have a runaway for alligator on their hands and they don't know what to do in the back. It's a Alolan Sand Slash. And yeah, there's just nothing they can do. The Sand Slash just stops tapping. They're getting karate chopped all the way down and we're able to take the win. What an amazing lead. Claude Sire versus Wiggly Tough opponent is going to throw a charm, save switch into for Alligator. And again, another situation where having access to Sludge Bomb is going to pay off. It's cheaper than Stone Edge to the first, so I can force a shield and now bring in my own Gator. 
One option could have been to potentially just bring in Pangoro instantly when they brought in the Feraligator. I decided against this personally just because I thought that they're trying to bait this out. They have a Wheatley Tough on the lead. They're probably weak to the Panda in the back. So that could have been a play that I could have done, but I thought that Pangoro would be valuable end game. Here, I'm unsure if I live a charm, but as we see, I barely tanked that charm. For Alligator surviving on one HP a couple times during these sets. In the back is Quagsire. So it turns out they were not trying to bait out the Panda Bear. Quagsire now has 5-4 Aqua Tail pacing instead of 4-4. So it is going to be slower due to the Mudshot rework. And look at the energy generation again. I'm just gushing over this energy generation because it is so much fun. It is the same energy generation as Gallade, but Karate Chop does more fast move damage than Psycho Cut. So you're going to be actually able to farm stuff down, whereas Gallade not often going to be able to Psycho Cut farm things down. Gallade overall does have, I would say, the better coverage, but... There's something to be said for having some fast move pressure as well as pairing it with just insanely good energy generation. Good lead in the next match, Claude Sire versus Azumarill. Opponent is going to go straight Ice Beam. I believe this is my one loss and we're going to go through the mistakes that I made. First off, I don't have to switch out of this lead. I can just stay in with the Claude Sire and play it out and win zeros, but I end up switching into the Feraligator. My opponent banks a ton of energy, brings out Toxapex, and this is off to a rocky start here. Toxapex going to be able to absorb Hydro Cannon after Hydro Cannon. This season, I'm a big believer that Ice Beam is a must. I don't think Crunch accomplishes a lot. With one exception, and that's the Toxapex matchup. But realistically, Ice Beam is going to be so much better considering the amount of dragons and grasses that will be roaming now that Skarmory is dead. I'm going to look to overfarm. Looks like that was a cap tie. As I go up against the Toxapex, Hydro Cannon will be able to pick up the knockout. Opponent going to bring in their own Claude Sire, and this is where things get very difficult because my opponent has put me in a difficult spot where they have three fighting resists. This means that my Panda Bear has nowhere it can go. They get the shield call right on the Earthquake, and now this will be awkward. I know they're probably going to try and snipe with the Azu, so I'm just going to click the Sludge Bomb. In comes the Azu! And thankfully, this will be able to pick up the knockout. Down goes the Azumarill, but I wasted my energy now, and they're going to be able to overfarm well and win this game. I think if I just stay in with the Claude and play out the Zeros versus Azu, I'm in a better spot. Here, I have to try and go for a catch, but even a catch wouldn't win me the game. They show great patience. They farm me down. Yeah, this, this just isn't winning for me. And this is why I think... Even though Pangoro is going to be very good in Go Battle League, I think it's going to be slightly less good in the like play Pokemon style tournaments, just purely based on the fact that when you know it's coming, if you can align it onto Claude, it's a very difficult matchup for the Panda. Granted, you're actually able to deal neutral damage with Night Slash, so it's better than if Machamp was stuck there, but it's still an awkward matchup overall. We move to the next match. We see another Shadow Galvantula. The fact that I saw two is pretty wild. In comes Dragonair. And again, instead of 7-6 pacing, this is 6-6 pacing. I like Sludge Bomb as an idea, especially considering that Go Battle League is a blind format where opponents don't know that I don't have Stone Edge. So I can still get shields in situations where Stone Edge would be valuable. And I get some pretty nice utility out of Sludge Bomb. I'm going to fire off the Earthquake here. I'm not expecting a double shield, but they do actually double shield. So I'm just going to switch out. Our switch timers are heavily misaligned, and switch clock is now 50 seconds instead of 60, which means that my opponent can switch out here into the Galvantula, but the Galvantula is going to get immediately sent back to the Pokeball, courtesy of this Hydro Cannon. Down goes Galvantula. In the back, they have Ariados, and this game is over. Ariados is going to take a ton of damage from the Hydro Cannon. Opponent ends up throwing their energy, realizing that Poison Sting down, they're just going to lose too much health. They have to kind of hope for a cross poison boost, which they don't end up getting. Unfortunately, I do get a frame drop there. Definitely not ideal. They're probably going for the lunge here, and they will go for the lunge. Out comes Dragonair. I can just close combat. That's going to be good night to the Dragonair, even at minus one, easily will KO. And then I can Night Slash the Ariados. So, as we're seeing, the pacing incredible, the coverage is limited, but the pacing is undeniably incredible. Hopping into the final match, Claude Sire versus the Talonflame. This was the first battle of the video, and now the last battle of the video, same leads. And again, I don't have Stone Edge, but my opponent does not know that. So, the Sludge Bomb will get the shield. They don't have to shield that move, but the nice thing here is... 
they end up shielding it because they don't know I don't have the stone edge. They go for the flame charge. I'm able to make a sludge bomb. They might still think I have stone edge, but it's unlikely at this point. Opponent ends up double shielding. I'm basically just, just going to chalk that up to the fact that it's a day one battle. So the opponent ends up double shielding the lead and I can definitely just let this go and go for energy on for alligator because again for alligator just doesn't really have any counters this season which does mean that in my view it's going to offer a tremendous amount of neutral play it's hard to be hard countered if for alligator doesn't really have any counters so i'm very excited to see how the meta progresses i'm able to pick up the knockout i have a ton of energy they bring in venusaur not for much longer as this ice beam will pick up a one hit ko onto that venusaur in the back is umbreon and i can just bring in pangoro they definitely should have brought in the umbreon to absorb the gator energy but either way panda up a shield was sweeping all in all this pokemon is an insane amount of fun to run I paired it with very strong teammates, but overall, this team really felt great to use. The Claude Sire Shadow for Alligator core should be the top meta core for this season, and Pangoro's ability to absolutely nuke when shields are down and just outpace things constantly makes it an incredibly fun Pokemon to use. While I do have its doubts about its play in show six style formats like the regional championships in Go Battle League, Pangoro is a serious force to be reckoned with. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.